action. Pound Town, I just love Pound Town. My, my what do you, what she say? Pound Town, I just love Pound Town. My coochie pink and my booty hole brown. Yeah, yeah. What's exactly. up with that, bro? What, 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 is that the is that the culture? Is that indicative of black women in that society right now? Is that where we're going? Because if that's if that is like, I don't want to have no parts of none of that behavior. Unfortunately, I think as a whole, I think it's not what represents every black woman but i think most black women applaud it and uh get excited about it professional black uh, women are leaning into that bro professionals are like hell yeah yeah professional black women that's what i'm saying like i don't i don't think it's representative of them but they all applaud it and champion it so uh it's a major part of our culture and that's disturbing is it jamming hell yeah it is jamming i can't pretend like it's not jamming oh, it jam. could it could it be some party music i think she got another song talking about ski yee Hey, I ain't gonna lie. To <laughs> <laughs> <A> ski. <laughs> it's like it's, it's it's really it's really going. Hey man, it's knocked the headphones off, dog. <laughs> dog. I I couldn't even. Hey, look. Hey, I ain't gonna even lie to you. As a uh ex audio engineer, producer, and all of that, man. Uh, I would say it jam. I like. I ain't gonna lie. It jams. You know, I'm 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 a sucker for a good jam. As far as the content. And the content distribution to young ears, young minds, impressionable uh, minds and years of black people, black, mainly black uh, little girls, I think is terrible. I think our choice in music is very terrible. I think what we decide to push in our music and what we decide to talk about all day in our music is very terrible. I remember being a child and I would be getting ready to go to school. And I think it was the BET, uh, one, not 106 in Park. This is the show they play in the morning time. And then the dudes was like, give me your project chick, one that don't give up, whoop, and say she took that. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that was, you know what I'm saying? Hip-hop is, is, is vulgar, you know, uh, but I think hip-hop is a direct reflection and representative of what we do experience as a whole. And we experience more lower class culture than anything else, because I think that that was the intention after slavery was to put us in a permanent lower class group uh, in society. I do. I do believe that. And this is not me being the victim. I'm not practicing in the victimhood because I do believe that your situation doesn't have to define you. You can will yourself out of a lot of things. Um, but I think as a community, as a whole, we can't deny where we've been placed post slavery. And I and I and I intend to get into a lot of that in this show. But we have been placed in a in a permanent lower class. Uh, of that that word that you use, you use the word placed. Mm -hmm. And just as being a human autonomous person, when I hear these words being used, the way that we've been subjugated, mm -hmm. like well, if we go back to, to slavery, we can look at individuals. We had the conversation before about Frederick Douglass. We can look at Booker T. Washington. We can look at George Washington Carver. We can look at freed slaves who actually who actually made the ability, who actually had an opportunity to assimilate into common culture and just through the work at just through work ethic ideas and their inventions they were able to make a profit now that's anybody who has an idea any ingenuity then you can be successful and so when we go all the way back to that place how do we get to this degenerate place where we got a woman talking about her coochie pink and her booty hole brown i'm going to pound town you know, I'm, I'm going to take the soul food uh, analogy from Big Mama when she was like, you know, you got your fingers, your hands like this, and mm -hmm. you try to punch something that's not really, is is it's not good for you, it's not strong, you could break your fingers, right? But if you right ball on. that fist up and you make a fist, if you put it all together, it's a, power, it's, man. It's a powerful punch. We can talk about, we've always in this country talked about the selective few. We have the selective few. You have Frederick Douglass. Uh, you have the you have the a uh, Booker T. Washington, a W. E. Du Bois, uh, E. B. Du Bois, and and that's very true that you have these great men. And if you think about society as a whole, even when you think about white people, they have their talent of one percent. They have also. their talent in one percent also. But I think if you do the comparison in the punch, if you do the comparison in the communities, I think they are significantly further ahead of us. Rich white men do not promote their degeneracy. They have all the crazy sex parties. They do all the debaucherous things. They do not promote that. I don't they think white people do. I don't think white people as a whole or any culture does it the way black people do. They have a subsection and they call it subculture. They have a subgenre of their music. They have grunge. They have right. punk rock. They have hard metal. But they, white people do not accept that as they mainstream culture. For some reason, black professionals, even even people in the boule, you know what I'm saying, the talented 10th, 
lawyers, doctors type black women, politicians type black women running around here talking about my my booty pink, or my, my, my coochie pink and my booty hole brown. I'm like, how in the world are you the rep- representing us in the professional class and you have no class? There's always been an over-sexualization of black people, though. That's the other part of this. Again, all the vile parts of us are entertainment for the world. And we are oblivious to this. We don't wake up and understand Whose how detrimental. Uh, there, there comes a time when you have to look at yourself. So we can no longer blame others when we know better. But there, but this was something that was definitely impressed upon us. We Look, I was talking to a, a young lady who was a scholar who said that uh, she got to work with this professor at Emory okay. in Atlanta. And there was a work of arts. Uh, donated to them uh, that were these etchings or, you know, this these this art collection, if you will, um, of pornographic material from slaves, almost like some domin- dominatrix. Explicit, explicit. explicit well, ex- explicit material, you excuse me, ex- explicit material that was, um, that was reflective of that. And I think that's a part of our in- ingrained culture that we just don't here's seem, some, here's that we seem to forget. Back. If you look at tapestries from the medieval times, they have a lot of debaucherous art in the white community also. Facts. And like even in stained glasses, you go to cathedrals and you'll see the exact same nudity. Artists have always pushed the extremes of our of our culture. When you look at the statue of, of David, you know what I'm saying? They got his tallywhacker out. Like this is what artists do. They- but did we consent to it? I think that's the part. I think I don't I think a lot of what's been uh forced on us, we didn't have consent to, nor did we have the proper information on how to navigate away from that like other cultures do. And again, this is not me. This is not me forcing blame on anybody. I don't think poor people ever have consent. I think that poor people are preyed upon in every society and have been since the beginning of time. Well, there you go. So if you look at if you look at the American black slave, though, he's never escaped that. He's never escaped anything out of the lower energy, lower class of society. That's my personal opinion. We've never truly escaped it. It's been a continuum. We try to we try to divide Jim Crow and slavery. We try to break it up, but it's a continuum. It's like it just continued on. It feels and, good yeah. not to have no discipline, bro. It feels good to eat the candy and just be have the sugar rush. And then when we get obese, we, oh, it's not my fault that I'm fat. Yes, it is, man. You know that's what you was eating. You know that that's your diet. Like, that's our behavior. And I think that like right now, I think these conversations that we have is just to hold ourselves accountable for our behavior. Like I don't have to participate in that gender behavior. I love big booties, bro. I love a set of pretty titties. They are phenomenal. They get me so excited. But when but when you put it out on the market, so scarcity determines value. And when black women make themselves souls, sexualize themselves, you're not scarce. And not, to me, that's not valuable. I see I see I see your breasts. I see your booty. And I know that it's it's for the low low. Now, I think when we talk about whys and causation, that's when we talk about history. But now that we're aware of it, now we must talk about progression. And I think that's where you're at. And I think sometimes when black men, black women get together and have this conversation, we confuse the two. We can talk about causation and reason. But it's just like when you go to therapy, once you understand that, hey, I have a problem, it is now upon who to fix that. It's upon me. It's my responsibility. So as black people as a whole, now that we know better, we got to do better. I like the way that you just paralleled it to a mental illness, because I think the general behavior is a mental illness. It is. Living in poverty and trauma is a mental illness. It is. But when you go to therapy, you learn coping skills, you get tools on how you understand that what I think controls my behavior. And once you understand that my thoughts are a reflection of my life, I'm creating my own reality with my own thoughts, then shit, I got to think some better thoughts, man. I have to be more than just uh, a piece of booty. I have to, as a man, I got to be more than just my tally worker and my, and my, and my house line this D. I have to be a whole person. This is something that we have to do exclusive from white people. And this is my issue with black conservatives. Black conservatives, as we were talking previously, uh, like Candace Owens, like the Hodge twins, they're saying, Kind of what we're saying right now as far as, okay, we have an issue. We have this uh, debauchery going on that we need to fix. However, they're saying it in the faces of white people and saying it in such a way that appeases white people and take the heat off lean. I think they lean into the theater. And it's just it's understanding economics. For me, uh, if I want to perform, and I only want to say if I want to just say I'm only targeting the black audience. Maybe in totality is 13%. If I only target black men, then I'm getting down to around six and a half percent or less. And I want to make a whole dollar. I don't want six cents on a dollar. I want the whole dollar. And so to get the whole dollar, I got to address 60% of America, which is going to be white folks.
So you think that it's it, there's some capitalism involved? It's if I, not, they're not being genuine. If my name is Yolanda <laughs> Adams, then I'm only a gospel singer. If my name is Beyonce, boy, I'm a world star. Right, right, right. There, there is profit to being secular. That's very true. The unfortunate part for those of us that don't want to do that is we're going to have to make a sacrifice if we really want to see some real change in our community is some of us won't have an. See, I, I don't I don't care if my my message is appealing to everyone, because the one thing that I stand by is the truth. And the truth is very uh, it, it is divisive. The truth is very divisive. So I don't live in this world where I want to have a candy coated message from for everyone. So we are going to talk about the ills of black people because we do practice a very vile and perverted culture that we need to be aware of. At the same time, I'll never let the white man off the hook and say he don't got a part in this. I will, because I will never go to war and expect my enemy to help me. Damn. OK, keep continue. I'm just saying. Like if we want, if we're going to be men and take our place in this market and say that we have an industry, then we have to create the industry. Industry. We have to create the infrastructure to uplift and say, "Hey, black women, y'all don't have to behave that way." Right. Like, and if we want to be full men in this society, my woman has to be able to listen to me. Yes. In order for her to listen to me, she has to understand that I have standards and I have boundaries. Their idea of what vanity is, it's not cost effective for me. When I look at any woman. And it's going to it's going to hit a whole lot of black women. If you got extensions, if you got weave, if you got fingernails and you got eyelashes, your bill starts at six hundred dollars a month. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a car note mm -hmm. that, that that that's a life insurance policy. But we ain't thinking about invest. Right. People want to talk about divest from the from America and they don't want to invest in themselves. And that's yeah, a problem. I, now, I don't I don't agree we should be divesting in America and I don't because we're Americans. We 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 must get it through our heads, too, that this is just as much as our country as anybody else. In fact, we were here at his very founding of it. But I want to ask you a question. What's up? Because we all seem to talk about black women a lot. Would you agree that in the black community, she must be addressed first? She 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 must be healed of her sickness. I personally think that black women without the healing of black women, our community is doomed because they're the loudest. They talk the loudest. They have the biggest influence. And as you said, as men, we got to address them first. And many of us are afraid to do that. Before I'm a black man, I'm a man. Before I'm a man, I'm a human being. Right. Whatever your problem is. Hey, you need to go heal your traumas. I cannot I cannot be held accountable for your behavior. I can't do it. I got to fight my own traumas. I have to go out and do the thing. So while you're over there misbehaving, I'm going to try my best to create the media that sets a standard. And if you want to come and follow my lead, that's fantastic. If you do not, baby, that's your choice. Free will is the most bestest gift that God gave any person. And black women right now have the free will to act a fool. And they are doing it in abundance. In abundance. In abundance. And I think that's why they get addressed so much. You know, it's funny. On TikTok, the highest percentage of women that watch my video. Well, I said, just said it. The highest percentage of people that watch my videos are women. And I'm assuming it's black women. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's funny. So I definitely think that they know they need a message. They need some guidance in what they're doing. Um, because now we have surveillance. We have surveillance in such a way we hadn't previously. So now we get to see the vileness and the perversion that we practice. Are you comfortable with it? Are you comfortable with the perversion that you have? And I don't think this question was even answered last time is, who are you helping by walking out the house half naked? They got so angry in the comment section. Look, you know, you get a percentage of the breakdown when it comes to the views, right? right. And so out of thousands of views, the like to dislike ratio was like 55%. Those women were hitting the dislike button in abundance. <laughs> you can't tell me what I can wear. You should go mind your own business. Hey, beautiful women who want to do your own thing. If if that's your business, that's your business. But don't come run to me when someone tries to take it. Don't come run to me when he don't, when he don't want to have nothing to do with you. Ooh. Don't ask me for my help. You got it. Okay. As I said, we're going to make this a shirt. If I can't correct you, I can't protect you. You want my protection. You must receive my correction. <laughs> you have to. So, you know, I think these women are very confused as to how many people see them when they're out uh, half naked. Do you know what their problem is? What? They got penis envy. <laughs> women running around here with penis envy. All they can say. their own mushroom. Their only argument I is. Think. Their only argument is. Um, if you can do it, I can do it too. Sweetheart. I'm willing to fight for it. I'm willing to sacrifice my life for it. And if you can't do that, then you just out here just giving it away for free. 
I'm willing to fight and defend my ideas. Can you do that? Can you say the same? I don't think they can. I mean, they can. They, they can't say the same because they can't do the same. They can't do it at all. They can't defend their ideas physically. Um, I've even said this before, even with black women. It's like, just like in the case of this woman who had her son... Uh, come and kill this man who attacked her. Why do you even think it was possible for you to be in conflict with the man who is significantly stronger than you? And then you put your son in a place to have to commit a murder. You know what I'm saying? Son husbands are scary. They yeah. are terrifying things. Women, man, goodness, they're the most vulnerable person, the most vulnerable group of people in our society are single women. The most vulnerable group of people in our society are single black women. And then those women, they lean so heavy on their little boys. They just lean because you ain't got no man. You can't keep no man, but you got an idea in your mind what a man is. And so you take your idea of what a man and you project that on your son. And you completely emasculate him. And then now you got yourself a little pit bull. Just as how social media has helped continue to program us, it will take media and content like this. Like you say that if they follow them, because they're going to watch, they're watching anyway, they're disliking it. This is the type of material that's going to change their lives because they need information. We, we perish from a lack of knowledge. A lot of these women are just foolish. And again, I've said this before. I mean, I said this the last time, you know, coochie is an asset. I said this body is an asset. These are the things that they're utilizing to gain provision and not understanding that it's the acts of service that will get you the provision you need from a real man. You know, coming in and like he said, being cooperative, um, assisting and building something with this man is giving service. You know, I heard Tim Robbins talk about this is he thinks uh, like this. What value can I bring somebody like what value can I bring to someone? Not what can you do for me? It's the same thing that John F. Kennedy said. That's, you know, that's the economy. Like that's right. the marketplace. Like if, if I provide a good service, then people will buy my product. If I do not provide a good service, no one's going to buy my product. And right now, 75% of black women will never get married. That's true. And so that, that tells you that the thing that you're providing, don't nobody want it. Not no black man, not no white man, not no Mexican man. Don't nobody want that shit. Man, behave yourself and stop acting like an asshole. Ask not what your man can do for you. <laughs> Ask what you can do for your man. Dear women, because <laughs> y'all out here, y'all out here playing and you'll tell me I'm a misogynist. Hell no. I really love you. And I really want the opportunity to protect you and to love you with all, with my whole heart, with my whole person. But if you tell me that you're an individual person and that you're equal to me, then you got it. Well, money has also uh, got them very delusional because they feel as though they can make a certain amount of money. He who has the goal or in this case, she who has the goal uh, creates the rules. And what they don't understand is there's a lot of responsibility, like we talked about, that comes with having that financial and monetary gain. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, especially when you talk about taking care of your kids. Listen, life isn't about taking trips and uh, buying material uh, materials for yourself um, all day, every day. Life just isn't about that. And many of them practice this consumerism, this this heavy consumerism. With no savings plan. With no savings plan. <laughs> None. With no life insurance. Motherfucker, you ain't got shit except for pictures on the Instagram. And that's disgusting. These women will be bragging about these six-figure incomes, but I wonder how many of them actually have at least $10,000. I don't lie about my real lived experience. Right. Hey, like I know that I'm in the working class. I understand that. I know that Likewise. I have work to do to be economically popular powerful in america but telling the truth is how you get powerful and so i want i want to compare the black community to women hey women if you do not have the ability the physical ability to defend yourself then you can't defend your ideas dear black community you can't you got to stop begging black you got to stop begging white people to come and save you why the hell would any other group of people come and help you that don't make no god doggone sense and so if we want to be powerful we have to empower ourselves we have to create media we have to create cities we have to create municipalities we have to create communications uh companies we have to create the infrastructure so that we can be self-sufficient and not self-sufficient in africa not self-sufficient in the middle east self-sufficient right here in america through through ownership <laughs> I didn't want to preach it. Hey, look, here's the other thing, too. We have we talk about the most idiotic shit all day <laughs> online. Who's snitching? Um, all the gossip. Hey, I said this. Kiki Palmer, Carly 
uh, Wolf Ticket Russell. The girl that ran away. Yeah, the girl who ran away to film her own. Hold on. The 25-year-old woman who ran away eating Twinkies and Ho-Hos and shit. Was she in medical school or something like that? I don't, all that? I know is that she was Googling how, how to get abducted. She was Googling uh, uh, how, to, how to fabricate being a missing person. Her sexy red, this occu this is o black people. Listen to me. <laughs> Pound town. This is occupy your minds for at least a month. <laughs> and while this is going on, the world just keeps spinning and passing you by. There are things that are so much more greater than this. So everything this brother just said, as far as the things that we need to do to make our situation better without complaining and yes being a victim because we can't be a victim uh we can't use that anymore and we can't beg white people anymore you have to wake up and get out of this idiocracy you live in like all you do is get online and look at the most perverse shit all day and you just talk about that you don't talk about anything else we can't even get past the 50 50 conversation in relationships the, the community to me is just going down the drain I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, we could talk this shit all day and we want people to tune in and get a change. But if you we're we're really watching our own destruction online. I like to talk to men because I'm raising young boys to become men. And it's all about accountability and responsibility. And, and so success isn't a secret. It's a system, right? You have to set yourself mm -hmm. up to be successful in life. And it comes to collaboration, creativity, curiosity, courage. There are three more other C's, but this thing we have to work together in order to accomplish the goal but we ain't got no goals my goal is to create a media entity that helps black folks of course we're going to generate money and i'm gonna hire some producers i'm gonna hire some editors i'm gonna put I hire some marketers we're gonna put people on so that we can have for real black business that gets me excited when people like Kanye West, he went and uh, had a partnership with Adidas and he had a partnership with The Gap and he made some statements and all of a sudden the whole black community abandoned that man. And I'm like, what in the world? You're supposed to go, man, from what, from my understanding, that gentleman, if you went to him looking for funding, he provided funding if you had a legitimate business plan. And so for me, man, I would like, I would like black America to build five cities in the United States of America. Five cities. I, I ain't talking about no five towns. I want waste management plans. I want satellites, bro. I want. A, I want the entire infrastructure. Can white people live there? Hell yeah. This is about diversity and inclusion. <laughs> well, you know, a unique, a unique thing about Harris County because we live in Harris County and Houston. It has the most black people in the country right now, in Harris County. So we can also start right, right where we're at by galvanizing black people we can come together and start to actually infiltrate these systems around us that really does scare me though because wow. they, they did the same thing in atlanta and when, <laughs> when, they, when they did it in atlanta all of a sudden it just it turned into an lgbtq plus movement and then when they started to have black dollars you started to get black jack boys and so now they have a they have a real class divide over there you got affluent blacks and you got poor blacks who's robbing the affluent blacks and they making the news. Well, I think that's going to happen anywhere unless we're reprogrammed. So, like, when you talk about having media like this, which this is going to be the largest uh, media company in, in the United States. The Greatest States. American Live. The Greatest American Live. We're going to be the largest media. We're saying that right now. We're professing that, and this is true. We're going to be the most wealthiest media outlet. We're I want to gonna... tell them the truth. The same way that the, the LGBTQ plus community co-opted the rainbow flag, I need the black American citizen to understand that that flag, that red, white, and blue, the stars and stripes, that's yours. That's your flag. Blood was spilled so you could have it, not so you can cry and say, I once was a slave. It's your ancestors endured it so that you can have it, and now you have it. And I'm saying fight for it, defend it. When you start running around with, with uh, a, a red, white, and blue do-rag on, right? What what is Uncle Cracker going to say? And you can't and and, and, and and you don't have to associate that with whiteness. I think that's where we have fear in us. We let white people say that it's theirs, but no, 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 no. It that's fifty fifty. That's the fifty fifty argument is that we put in work for this too, and we have to approach that from a scholastic view. We have to intellectually argue these points instead of running away from it and getting caught up in Pan Africanism and all that other bullshit. This is our country. Black people, we worked for it. This is ours. We need to fight for it here. I agree with that. Liberal America, uh, Democratic part, the Democratic Party is bringing in as many immigrants as they can to have low class labor so they can replace American people. And is that is that un, is that right or wrong? I don't know. If that's policy. But I know that if actual Americans, white Americans, black Americans, the descendants of our ancestors 
if we defend this thing and we stand up and build industries, there's no way in the world that immigrants are supposed to be making more money in America than Americans. I, I agree with that. But, I agree with that. But the Asian community, Nigerians, by the dollar amount, they make more money than the average white person or black person, period. And they're covering out entire communities. Right, right under your nose. This is why we must wake up. This is why we must really get in tune and get into the information uh, that's happening around us outside of who's snitching and and brown booty hoes and pink Gucci <laughs> hoes. Like we have to we have to wake up from that. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult without programming. So you need programming. Ice Cube is trying to build a media entity. He's trying to have a sports team, a sports league. And he's facing actual financial pushback because black folks refuse to support this man. And they, don't, they refuse to re support him because he had a meeting with a representative from Donald Trump's camp. Well, you know, white ice is colder, too, you know, because we'll, su we'll support anything. Most things white we will support over, over black ran organizations, which not to say that we don't have our issues because we do have issues that we need to correct. But even when there's those of us that are trying to do something for us, there's always a lot more pushback. Have black folks did some bad business, been in scamming culture? Hell yes, yes. we have. Yes. But the only way that we can replace that is yes, I acknowledge that Tulsa, Oklahoma happened. We got to build five more Tulsa, Oklahomas. And all we want is the freedom to exist. If you bomb my shit, then we're gonna send you to we're gonna send you to jail. We're gonna give you the life sentence and we're gonna rebuild with insurance. Are we promoting black people to be police officers? Are we promoting black people to be uh or I should say influencing to be councilmen? Civil uh, servants. Civil servants. Like we run away from these things, not understanding the impact and influence we can make if we get in and begin to do our own hiring. See, look. That affirmative action thing is an issue, but just imagine this for, if you will, imagine if we begin to infiltrate these organizations, just as other communities have begun, like the Asians and like the Indians, and we get in a place where we get to hire the way we want. Can't say we're racist if you walk in and you don't see any real diversity. If you see, hey, this was a place that wasn't normally blacks, but we've hired a bunch of black people in here. You, you, have, can't, yeah. you need affirmative action if you're asking to be in someone else's space. You don't true. need affirmative action if you design your own space. That's true. I don't have to ask permission to go home. Hey. That's true. <laughs> Shit, That's true. man. Like, we got to build it. If we build it, they will come. That's true. Black gas stations, black hotels, black business, man. And it comes in collaboration with working with other business folks. I think they said as black people, too, we have, uh, as consumers, I think we spend trillions of dollars. Like, we spend tr trillions of dollars each year. Uh, so that's your capitalism. I mean, well, that's your capital. I mean, that. So we often think we need to go to banks. We think we need to go to all these other institutions to get money. We actually have enough money. Hey, you guys could be given to this podcast. There are people out there right now that could be donating and giving to this podcast so we can build it up and continue to get this information out. You give it to church. You, you give it to the preacher who we don't, he's shaky sometimes, but you could be donating here, buying our merch that we have coming out. All these things that we have coming to invest things near you, you can invest in us so we can continue to invest in you. There you go. The greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.